Howdy everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve and I am a full-time RVer. Sometimes I use Starlink internet in order to get online and share these videos with you. And sometimes I'm out in the middle of nowhere and have no electricity whatsoever and need to make this stuff work. So today I'm gonna to show you a way to convert your Starlink to run off of your 12 volt battery system that you already have in your trailer. And if you don't already have a battery in your trailer, I'm gonna show you a way to hook it up to a regular battery and get all of that fun stuff working. Let's get right to it. If you guys remember a while back, I made this box here about how to convert your Starlink from 120 volt AC to 12 volt DC for off-grid boondocking use. There's a link to that video at the top corner up there for you. Let's see what's inside this box real quick and I'll tell you a quick story while I'm showing it to you. I am always on a quest to solve problems. And one of the problems that I ran into with this box and I had to steal some parts out of it, the router that I was using was from an ISP that provided very, very bad customer service. Email me if you wanna know who that ISP was, but their equipment is gone from here and that was the router that was underneath. This is the 48 volt converter from 12 volts to 48 volts. This is the power over ethernet injector. This is the cable adapter for the Starlink cable to go to ethernet. And down here, because I had room in the box, just for grins, I put in a 12 volt power supply that you could plug into a wall socket so you don't have to undo the transformation from 120 volts to 12 volts. You can always run off of 12 volts with this power supply and this array of stuff. So as a result of that video, there are new products on the market. There is a all-in-one package that does the work of all the stuff that I had on the board all for you. So you don't need to source individual little parts and you don't need to fiddle with putting them all together and you don't need to worry about getting cables hooked up backwards and all kinds of other problems. They also have a Wi-Fi router. So we're gonna update the box and put their gear in it. This comes from Xtar Link instead of Starlink, or maybe it's Starlink, because I pronounce my X's in words with a Z sound. And it comes from Shenzhen Star Electronics in China, where all the products in the world are made these days. Let's take a look and see what we get in the box. Oh, it's got Anderson power poles. I already like that. There's the media adapter. We've seen that before. And there is the power supply and the instruction manual. We don't use instructions on this channel. So this thing here takes your original dishy cable and you plug it into there and then it takes your RJ45 ethernet cable and this is just a converter between the two so you don't have to cut your cord. And I was always not wanting to cut the cord. That's a $75 cord and I don't wanna do that. So this is very useful. This is the dishy V2 original cable to RJ45 adapter. Same one we used in our previous video. Oh, this is pretty slick. So we have 12 volt output, so you can get your 12 volt back out, that's interesting. And then we have 48 volt PoE output, so that would plug into your media converter. We have our 12 volt power input and it's using Anderson power pole connectors. These Anderson power pole connectors are a fantastic bit of kit that I use a lot for anything 12 volt. If I see red and black in this shape, I know it is a 12 volt connector and these things handle up to 45 amps. And then this here has got to be your 12 volt to 48 volt adapter. So this is your DC conversion for Starlink V2. Let's see what kind of cables we get with this. Oh, this is pretty cool. They appear to have given you everything you need. So you have the short RJ45 connector for networking. So your 48 volt PoE output goes to your media converter, which goes to your dishy cable. And then we have a set of fused power pole leads. So there's your fuse. What do we have inside? We have a little mini automotive fuse, 20 amp variety. And then these two go to a 12 volt battery and this goes to the power connection here on the side. And once you have these Anderson power pole type connectors, it's really hard to connect them backwards. They do not fit if you try to connect them backwards and you're never gonna get the polarity wrong. Unlike solar panel connectors, the MC4 connectors, where they just kind of plug into each other all day long and you can get positive and negative reverse. So you're, you've got a little bit of built-in safety there. We have our DC output cable. So if you wanted to power another 12 volt device off of this with a 5525 connector, you could do that. And then this cable here, if you didn't want to plug it directly into a battery, you could plug this into your car cigarette lighter plug, your auxiliary plug, your power port, and then there is your power poles to plug it in. So this is a pretty compact little bit of kit and it will fit right inside my Starlink box. And then here is the Wi-Fi 6 router. It's the AX1800 model. And we have four antenna ports on it.
That's a pretty nice looking little unit. There doesn't appear to be a way to wall mount it, but this will fit inside of our box really easily. And then we have instruction manuals that we don't read. And then we have a router cable and we have a power supply. Let's see what this power supply is. There we go. Output 12 volts. So this is where that 12 volt output cable comes into play. I love this. So we're gonna take all of this mess and we're gonna put it all together. So the RJ45 cable plugs into the DISHI adapter. The DISHI adapter and cable plugs into the 48 volt power output. The power input comes from your battery terminals to power pole connectors. And that plugs in right here. And then on this side, you have a 12 volt wire that plugs in. So we get 12 volt from here and we plug that into the back of our router so we have 12 volt to our router but we take this LAN port here on top and we plug it into this WAN port here on the bottom and again we have a nice compact little kit going on and we are done on the back of the router from a physical hardware perspective first off this thing is super light it's like almost backpackable light it's so light it's actually if they put it in a smaller package, it would be even better. But we have the power port that I showed you. We have the WAN port. So this can plug into your cable modem. It can plug into your Starlink, obviously. It can plug into your other internet provider. If you happen to have a different internet provider, I happen to have a uh, T-Mobile home internet service that I use. And then you can plug computers directly into it. It's got a reset. It has a WPS button here for getting you online automatically. You press the WPS button and you put your device in a WPS mode and they just magically handshake and the world's a happy place. And it also says mesh. So I'm gonna take a look at the software that's on this and see if there's anything useful to share with you there. For my Starlink power up needs, I'm going to use this 100 amp hour battery from Power Queen. It puts out 12.8 volts. It has all kinds of protections based inside of it and it is the mini version and it is actually very mini. There is the size of my hand and the size of the battery. And this is actually smaller. You can see I use it quite a bit. This is actually smaller than a Group 24 size battery, which is the equivalent to the smaller battery that goes on the front of most travel trailers. There will be a link for this down in the description below. And this battery here will last you all day on your Starlink. And if you plug it into solar, then it will last you pretty much forever on good sunny days. One thing you wanna do is when you're going to bed at night, turn this whole thing off with the on off switch on the front of the adapter thing that we're working on here because there's no reason to waste power overnight charging a dish for internet access that no one is using. So connections are pretty simple. Let's get the little caps off, the safety caps off. We'll take the screws off and move those out of the way. And then we will use the included 12 volt power cable. And this thing needs to be peeled apart a little bit to get to the other battery terminal. And then my Leatherman that I use on every project that I ever work on in my entire life. And I put my red cap back on and my black cap back on so that nothing can hit the two terminals at the same time and cause problems. I have a kit for just about everything. This here is my Husky 12 gallon tote. You can get one of these from Home Depot and this is a perfect fit for the version two Starlink dishy device and all of its accoutrement. Let's take a look inside. I'll show you an update I did to this one as well. It used to be with my kit that if you took the plastic shipping packaging material that came with your Starlink and you place it in here, it would all hold it nice and fresh. And that is still true. However, it's kind of annoying because of the order of operations to put the stuff back in. The dish goes in last and the dish is usually the first thing I have taken apart. And I don't want to sit it like face down on the grass and get it all wet. So here is the offending 120 volt router that we're going to get rid of. This is actually a really good router. It's just 120 volts AC and that's not compatible with off-grid life. Then there is the very expensive Starlink cable. And this one is the one that would have to be coiled up and go inside of the case first, inside of that plastic packing material that goes on the bottom. And then I did keep this part here still. I don't know why, because you know, I guess I'm nostalgic. It helps me feel like the base isn't going to scratch the back of the dish where nobody can see it anyway. There's the dish, it's a perfect fit. The end of my Starlink cable is actually getting a little chewed up there. You can kind of see a little dent there. And these cables are really expensive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it plugged in to the media converter 
and that'll store nicely in the box. Those aren't my shoes. All right, so once we're done, I'm gonna unplug the power cable and the network cable from the router. And these router antennas fold nice and flat. And then I can just leave this plugged in. And then once I get out into the field, I can get the entire Starlink set up. I can have 90% of the non-weatherproof electronics inside of the red box. I can have my battery sitting inside the red box and the only thing coming out would be the Starlink cable. What I like to do, however, is I like to keep the other box, the black and yellow box, and have that as an indoor unit or have that under the RV elevated off the ground to keep it out of the weather, out of the elements, and keep it nice and dry, and then I don't have to run any cables through my RV at all. If you get yourself a nice solar panel, then you can keep this baby charged all day long as well. Now you've got a portable internet service provider in a box, and you can have all your friends online through your Starlink wherever you go. If you are curious about Starlink and want to try it out for yourself, check out the link in the description below for one free month of Starlink service. We need to get this thing connected to the internet. The manual that you get tells you what Wi-Fi SSID to look for, and it tells you what the password is supposed to be. And it's actually really difficult. 9876543210. So don't be sneaking on my Wi-Fi's, folks. Use your own. If you already have a Wi-Fi router, it will work just fine with your existing Wi-Fi router as long as you have a WAN port to connect to. I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to use this router. It is optional. You can purchase this or not, and you can just get the little Starlink <laughs> uh, adapter device with all the power bricks and everything that you need and all the cables and so on. Or you can get it with the Wi-Fi router. So this is their Wi-Fi router, but all Wi-Fi routers are kind of the same. Right now I'm connected to my T-Mobile home service, which works out pretty well most of the time. But sometimes you're really remote and you need Starlink. So I'm gonna go up to the top here and I'm gonna pick my Wi-Fi and there's this other network's choice. And this WR1800K is the one. And actually both of these, the 5G is obviously the five gigahertz frequency range and the one without is the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range. If you don't see one or the other, it could be because your computer is too old or too new to not see one or the other. In my case, I can see both of them. I'm going to pick the 5G because it's supposed to be faster. And it wants the password. 9876543210. Yep, typed it right. Join. And it joined quick. That was real fast. Yep, we're on it. Now, let's open up a new website and see if we can get there. Best website ever. Google. I'm kidding, of course. The best website is the one I was already on, which is my Living for a Living channel that you guys are watching. And that's how easy it is to get this thing set up. I didn't change anything. I didn't go in and put the uh, Starlink into the Starlink router into standby mode or disconnected mode or anything. I just plugged it in and turned it on and it works. Let's go check out a speed test real quick. SpaceX Starlink, Starlink, Starlight in Dallas, Texas. I am currently in Eagleville, Missouri. Hit the go button, let's go. That's not bad at all. If you know Starlink, that's actually pretty decent. Usually I get around 130 down and around 30 up. We're at 106 down and 23 up. Could just be the time of day it is. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go take a look inside of the router. Again, inside of your owner's manual, you have some instructions that show you that the router's IP address should be 192.168.100.1. And then the user ID and the password should be admin admin and then you can change all of this stuff after you log in and you should change it because you don't want somebody guessing your password 9876543210 is pretty easy to guess and admin admin is pretty easy to guess and the worst thing that somebody will do is they'll get onto your wi-fi well i guess i take that back the best thing that they'll do is they'll get on your wi-fi and they will change your password so that you can't go in and lock them out again your password is the initial password in order to secure in order to ensure information security do you want to jump to the password modification page for you no more remaining Yes, I do. So we need to come down to account management and type in our old password, which is admin, and our new password, which is securely generated by Firefox, and hit save. Success. Now we need to log in with the new password, and we're in. So now I have my admin, and I have a password that nobody knows except for you and me. Don't tell anybody. While we're in here, there really isn't anything you need to do besides change that password, but let's poke around and see if there's anything useful in here. Country or region, let's change that to United States. 
because I am in the United States and not China. All right, we've applied that change. And then here are your two settings for your 2.4 gigahertz or your five gigahertz. That's where you can change your passwords. Transmit power through walls, standard or energy savings. So through walls is gonna be your strongest transmit power. Black and white list, keep people out. WPS, mesh configuration. So you can mesh this router with another router. Relay mode, nice. So this will allow you, if you are in certain RV parks where they have Wi-Fi, it will allow you to relay their Wi-Fi onto your network. And this is actually really cool. In my full-time RV travels, I have quite a few devices that are going on. I've got my cell phone, my wife's cell phone, my laptop. I've got a printer. The printer is the biggest pain in the butt because it's not easy to switch networks for the printer. So what will happen is I can get to the park and I can take this Wi-Fi router and I can use it to relay the Wi-Fi from the park and not have to pay my Starlink bill. I can put it on standby or I can relay my T-Mobile home internet or I can put that on standby or whatever the case may be. But this is a pretty slick option because now I don't need to re-IP every single device inside my network in order to talk with every other single device inside my network. And I got a lot of devices in my network. I was actually really hoping that it had this feature and it does and I'm pretty excited about that in case you couldn't tell. Advanced configuration, high performance mode, it's already on. Band steering mode, nice. OU LAN, Wi-Fi 5 compatibility. TWT, MIMO, Network Advanced. So you can choose what IP address range you want to have your network on. It supports dynamic DNS. Let's turn it on and see who the vendors are. O-Ray or 3322. Okay, so it's not Dyn DNS, which is kind of the usual one that people use. You can create a guest network. Parental controls, keep your kids off the internet. Get those kids outside. That's what you went camping for, right? Static IP assignment, this is nice. VPN client, encryption. <laughs> okay, I am not seeing a way, encryption encryption. I'm not seeing a way to pick your VPN provider and I'm not seeing a way to put in your VPN credentials. And by VPN credentials, I mean like your, you know, encryption key. So this might be useful for some of y'all. I don't use uh, VPNs like this. Enable hardware NAT. This one has some useful information. Pingbaidu.com. All right. Huh. Looks like it's a Linux box under the hood. Maybe you can hack into it. Trace route. So there is your trace route information. A couple of lost packets along the way, but Baidu is in China, so I wouldn't expect it to be 100% reliable from Missouri to China. Features. FTP, RTSP, SIP, PPTP, L2TP, IPsec, port mapping, DMZ, MAC filtering, IP filtering, distributed denial of service prevention, enable SIN flood protection and drop invalid packets, nice. Management, status is synchronized with the current time and there's all the different time servers that you can choose. Change user info, that's where we change our password, we did that already. Backup and upgrade, brush new firmware, nice. Restart and reset, LED switch, so you can turn the lights off so you can go to sleep at night without having the blinky lights blinking in your face, that's good. But you really should turn this thing off at night if you're gonna be doing battery powered Starlink because there's no reason to use five amp hours of electricity per hour while you're sleeping because that's half of your battery just while you're sleeping. System law flow control, setup wizard, not a bad little router. And the whole time I was filming that how to set up the router portion of the video, I was over in that RV on the very far side of it because my office is up in the front in the bunkhouse. So pretty good range and that is metal siding. So if you know about radio, metal siding is actually going to prevent your signal from getting in. So it's only going in through the windows. Worked out pretty well. So I know what you're gonna ask, can you still control this thing through your Starlink and do the shutdown the stow of the dish through the Starlink app. Let's take a look at the Starlink app. It says it's connecting. It says we're online. I am using the WR1800K network, which is the one. So let's go into settings and Starlink and slide to stow and it's gonna disappear. Are you sure? And it's asking me this time because it thinks I'm connected remotely because I'm actually using my phone to go to the router, to go to the cloud, the cloud, in order to come back down to the Starlink dish and control the Starlink dish remotely. This is perfectly normal. And all you have to do is plug it back in again and it will unstow itself. And she stowed. When it comes time for bed, there is an on off switch down here. Just hit the off switch and that will save your battery power. If you are curious about Starlink and want to try it out for yourself, check out the link in the description below for one free month of Starlink service. There will be links in the description down below for all the stuff that I showed you here. If you go to the Starlink website and purchase it there, you will get a discount code of $20 off for clicking the link below. And if you sign up for their website mailing list, you'll get an additional $10 off coupon. So with all your combined discounts, this kit is $159 out the door. 12 volts, off-grid, boondocking, Starlink. 
for the win. Thanks for coming along with us on this journey, and be sure you're subscribed to the channel to see more updates on the off-grid boondocking lifestyle. There's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. I'll see you over there.